Before we begin, let me tell you that we are about to dive into the greatest thing Riot has ever done with their skins. From what I've seen, it is easy for me to say that this is the most creative event Riot has ever released. At least when it comes to the lore. And the crazy thing is that we are only in the first half. I can't imagine what's coming up next. But yeah, yesterday Riot released an animated trailer. And many rightfully assumed that this is the teaser for Yon. And I can only imagine how much people would have freaked out if nothing was leaked. But the truth is, we knew that Yon was coming. However, that doesn't take away from the awesomeness of this trailer. Not only are the animations stunning, but let me tell you, you won't believe how much detail there is in the story of this trailer. Because believe it or not, even though this event is focused on skins, it is fully canon. And that's the brilliance of this event. So, without further ado, let me explain every little detail in this animated trailer. Before we dive into the trailer itself, I should explain why all the Spirit Blossom skins are canon. You see, even though the skins themselves are not real in the universe of League of Legends, what the skins represent is real. For example, Teemo is still just a Yordle. However, Spirit Blossom Teemo represents a legend that people in Ionia believe in. And that's what these skins are. They are legends and stories that are real in the universe. This will make more sense as I individually point them out as we go through the trailer. But just keep in mind that the skins themselves are not canon, Vayne is still a demon hunter in Ionia, but the Spirit Blossom Vayne represents the demon hunter from the legend where the hunter saved the princess. Now, at the beginning of the animated trailer, we have this person introduced. And of course, everyone assumed that this is Yon. However, despite him having the same clothes as Spirit Blossom Yon, having the same family ornaments on his clothes, his earrings match perfectly. And even the horns, which will appear later. This is not Yon. And that's because the Spirit Blossom Yon is not Yon. Therefore, this guy is not Yon either. This person is the elder brother from the legend of the two brothers. And because many people are coming to this video having no idea what I'm even talking about, let me tell you the legend of the two brothers that appeared in the perennial story, where an older man explains this story to the main character. Ionians believe in different gods of the underworld, with the main two gods being the gatekeeper and the collector. When you die, the collector wants to collect your soul for himself, but the gatekeeper is trying to lead you to the peaceful afterlife. So now, let me quote the legend. One day, the gatekeeper and the collector crossed paths. The collector saw how many spirits the gatekeeper had led through the spirit realm to peace and happiness. And he grew jealous of her. And so, he devised a plan. He took two of his strongest, loudest bells and melted them down. Then, over twelve nights, he hammered them into two blades. Into the first, he poured some of his jealousy. Into the second, he poured some of his obsession. Then, when spring began, he let the spirits of those two swords bloom into the physical realm, and the swords grew from the ground like saplings. Saplings? That's what the two brothers thought the blades were when they stumbled across them in the forest. The brothers were the best of friends, perfectly loyal to one another and understanding of their roles in the world. The elder would one day inherit their father's own famed sword and lands, while the younger would inherit their father's ship. Both believed they would be great heroes, one at home and one abroad. One spring, they found the two sapling swords growing in the forest. Neither of the brothers had ever seen a tree grow so shiny or so sharp. Together, they chopped them down, each shouldering one to bring back to their home. Little did they know, this would be the last thing they would ever do together as brothers, while they remained alive. For as they walked home, the strange sap from the swords began to flow onto their necks filling them with horrible thoughts and feelings, those of the Collector. Though they did not become enemies that day, they would eventually bring those blades together, a clinging of bells that would sound throughout the physical and spirit realms, as nothing had before. And from this point on, the animated trailer has about a million references to this legend. So, let's get into it! At the very beginning of the trailer, you can see the elder brother waking up. And of course, this is happening directly after the final duel of the two brothers. 
Because at the end of that legend, both brothers died in their final fight. So here, the elder brother is in the afterworld. And in fact, at the very beginning of the trailer, for a moment, you can even hear the sounds of their final duel. <laughs> At first, the elder brother panics because he can't find his swords. But then, as he realized where he is, he calmed down. And that's when he saw the gatekeeper. Again, the role of the gatekeeper is to lead the souls of the dead to peace. And that's why this animated trailer is called The Path. Because whenever someone dies, they walk the path to peacefulness. But as they walk, and you'll see that in this trailer, there are different demons stalking around who try to lure the souls towards them and claim them for themselves. And you'll see that's what happens here. So lured by the beauty of the gatekeeper, the elder brother walks to a hill and he sees this magnificent tree. Now to many this may be just a random tree. But those who know the Ionian lore may realize that although we have never seen this tree in any art, we have only read about it. This really fits the description of the world tree, the god willow in the sacred grove of Amikaelan. Now you may be saying, didn't you explain in Lilia's video that the god willow was cut down by Ivern? Well yes, but since this is the elder brother of the legends of the two brothers, whose story happened decades before the three sisters even came to power, that means that at this point the god willow would be still standing. So this giant tree being the god willow makes sense. There is no confirmation, but I still wanted to point it out. At the same time, remember that this is happening in some portion of the spirit realm. The portion where the souls of the dead go. And because the spirit realm is a reflection of what's happening in the physical realm, even though Ivern cut the god willow down in the physical realm, that doesn't take away from the fact that it can still stand in the spirit realm. It sounds confusing, but that's how things work here. But now let's keep going. For a moment, the elder brother is charmed by the god willow. But then, as the wind blows, he seems to remember something awful. Which may be a hint towards the fact that his younger brother also used the wind technique. Just like Yasuo. Because remember, the legend of the two brothers is just a massive reference to Yasuo and Yon fighting. So then, as the elder brother follows the gatekeeper, we get to all the different sections of the path. First, we see Cassiopeia. Now, unfortunately, because Spirit Blossom Cassiopeia is not on PBE yet, we don't even have the description of the legend which she represents. But just from what I'm seeing here, I believe that all the stone statues around are not statues. Those are the souls of the dead who actually got turned to stone when they decided to stray from the path and walk towards Cassiopeia. As the elder brother walks past her, you can even see that Cassiopeia opens her eyes as she is a little bit mad that he didn't take the bait. Then we see the forest of souls of the Taker. Of course, the Taker is represented by Kindred. And that's because the Taker is literally Kindred. Because Kindred are the ultimate Grim Reaper, and everyone in the League of Legends universe has to meet Kindred at some point, even Aurelian Soul himself. That means that different regions believe in different variations of Kindred. The Freljordians and the Noxians only believe in the wolf. The Marcians believe in the wolf and the lamb. They essentially believe in the Kindred we have in the game. But Ionians believe in this other Spirit Blossomy version of Kindred. And that's what we see here. You can also see the souls of the dead becoming one with the trees. And I do believe that this is a reference to the Spirit Blossoms which are special blossoms which the dead can occupy, which then, when it blooms, it allows them to communicate with the living in the physical realm. And then we have this beautiful shot, which everyone thought, yeah, it looks cool, but nobody understands what's actually happening here. And that's because, even though this looks like a woman lying there on the stone, the entire mountainside is actually a fawn, with the rocky circles which we have previously seen in Ionia representing antlers. Because yes, this is the legend which Lilia represents. And here I want to directly quote the legend. A shy fawn spirit once served as a guardian of a sacred Ionian forest, until her grove was destroyed and cast into flame. Consumed by loss, she now slumbers in the spirit realm, reliving the destruction in an unending nightmare, unaware of the timid hope still waiting to bloom. So yes, this is the fawn spirit sleeping locked in an unending nightmare. Then, as the elder brother gets closer to the god willow, we see little statues representing different little tricksters, with a couple of them looking like Spirit Blossom Timo. And that's because Spirit Blossom Timo represents his own little legend in Ionia. 
Here is how that one goes. The trickster spirit and the child of the forest is famed across Ionia as an embodiment of nature, though he is more known as the king of pranks. A consummate gadfly and lover of all things annoying, his exploits in tricking mortals have graced the pages of Ionian history for hundreds of years. So yes, Timo literally represents an annoying spirit. But then, right before the end of the path, the elder brother notices the gate of the collector. And unfortunately, he takes the bait. And here is where I should note the description of this video. It says, Every myth carries a seed of truth. A slain swordsman must decide if he will make peace with his past, or be consumed by it. Which means that the elder brother was not the only swordsman to take this path. He wasn't the only one who got lured in by the collector, who probably gave him the false promise of dealing with his past. Of course, here we saw the younger brother slaying the elder brother in their fight. But curiously, you may notice that the younger brother has only one blade, but the elder brother has two blades. So together, they have three. But according to the legend, they only crafted two blades, the two sapling swords of the collector. So how does this make sense? You see, this is yet another little detail which Riot paid attention to so well. Remember, according to the legend, as the younger brother inherited their father's ship, so that he could sail around and be a hero abroad. The elder brother inherited his father's sword and lands. So one of the swords is the sapling sword and the other belongs to their father. That's why we have three blades here. Now of course because here he saw the younger brother killing the elder brother, that means that he is now staring at himself. And then the trailer reveals all the other dead around him. And this could have two different meanings. Either here it is a vision, so he sees all the souls that died because of his conflict with his brother. Or this could be all the other swordsmen who also took the path and they all failed, as they were lured in by the collector. So it is possible that here he sees all the other souls that failed to atone. Later I also realized that this might be the reason why the Collector turned the two brothers against each other. Remember, the Collector was jealous of the Gatekeeper, who was leading all those souls to peace. The Collector also wanted to take care of some of those souls, and so he caused a war, which made a lot of swordsmen fight each other, and that's how he lured them here. But because on their clothes you can actually see their family crest, which matches with the clothes of the elder brother, I lean more towards the theory that all of these are the souls which he could have prevented from dying. And as all this chaos goes rampant in his mind, he sees the gatekeeper in the distance, as she lowered her ears because she knows what's about to come. You could have saved them. And then as his own reflections tells him, you could have saved them. That is probably a reference to the fact that was he not to fight his own brother, none of these men would die. And here as his rage erupts, you see two magical lines. Now some might think, oh that's just a random visual effect, but it's not. And here is where we need to call out Spirit Blossom Thresh. Because all this time, many of you may know that the Spirit Blossom Ari that's coming up will represent the Gatekeeper. But from the interactions and the voice lines, it is pretty obvious that Thresh represents the Collector. However, that may not be exactly the truth. And here is where yet again, paying attention to little details goes a long way. Because the description of Thresh's Spirit Blossom skin says, The ancient demon of obsession delights in tormenting the spirits of those he deemed as flawed, but blooming with potential. He haunts the spiritual afterlife as a supreme collector of souls tempting the dead away from their path to salvation until they are trapped for eternity within their own memories. Pay attention to how the bio calls Thresh the demon of obsession, not the collector. Because remember, in the legend, 
the collector poured his emotions into the two blades. He poured his jealousy into one and obsession into the other. So all you can see here is the outcome of the obsessive side of the collector luring a swordsman in. So what the two magical lines are likely representing is his own rage and the obsession of the collector. And as he gives in to his rage, although I would love it if this was the Collector himself. Because again, remember, Spirit Blossom Thresh is not the Collector. That's the Demon of Obsession, which is only one half of the Collector. Unfortunately, I do believe that this is just the Elder Brother's inner demon. And as the two fight, when they clash, the fog disappears and we can see even more swordsmen perishing. This very shot makes me think that these people are not the people which the elder brother could have saved. I wondered why would Wright include this shot. Usually they don't do things just because they look cool, they give purpose to them. And so I do believe that the purpose of this shot is to show us all the other swordsmen who also took the bait. And yet none of them succeeded in beating their own inner demon. And this is followed by one of the coolest fights we have ever seen in any animated trailer from League. Here quickly notice how the demon broke one of his swords. And then as he went in for the kill, we can finally see the horns which I mentioned at the very beginning. I do believe that these horns are supposed to represent his ascended form, after beating his inner demon and atoning. And so, because the demon broke one of his swords, he disarmed the demon, and he used his own blade against him. And yes, this leads into the elder brother defeating the demon. But at the last moment, the demon took him down with him. Or he possessed his body, we still don't know. And this brings us to the final shot. I quickly want to mention that the path you see here with the little city underneath the tree fits perfectly the place where the god willow was at the beginning. So if this tree really is the god willow which Ivern cut down, and if this is Wally, because remember this is the Spirit Blossom Festival, and the main place where you celebrate that is in Wally. Which would mean that although we have never known where the God Willow was, now it might be confirmed that it was in Wally the entire time. But that's not important. What is important is the guy who emerged from the spirit realm. Now here I need to note that it was confirmed that we should be getting Yone as a champion. Not the combination of all the swordsmen who beat their inner demons, which would make sense. Because remember, the entire legend which we have just seen is not about Yone. That is the elder brother, who has lived through that story thousands and thousands of years before anything that's happening in the present days. So, and here I talked to a lot of people from the lore community, I need to tell you, nobody knows how this leads to Yon. We literally have no idea why we should be getting Yon as a champion. The only way for this to make sense would be if Yon on the path, because remember every swordsman takes this path when they die, if Yon also defeated the demon, and that's how he got free from the afterworld. But if Yon defeated the demon and he became free, why shouldn't we get the elder brother as a champion as well? Because he also defeated the demon. And that's why I personally believe that the champion we are getting is the combination of all the souls of all the swordsmen who took the bait and won. This could be the physical representation of all the souls who atoned. And here you may be saying, hold on. Didn't the Thresh skin have a quote against Yone specifically? Well, yes, but that was Spirit Blossom Thresh, which means that he likely had a quote against Spirit Blossom Yone. And Spirit Blossom Yone represents just one elder brother. Which, by the way, there was another amazing detail. There, Thresh said something along the lines of Don't worry, Yone, Yasuo is here with me. Worry not, Yone. Your little brother is safe with me, too.
And this is a reference to the fact that both of the brothers died in their final duel. So because Yon represents the elder brother and Yasuo represents the younger brother, as was told in the description of Spirit Blossom Yasuo. That's why Thresh would have both of their souls. But again, unfortunately, no one has any idea how this leads to Yon turning into this guy. Either the collector himself or the demon of obsession somehow took over Yon's body. And that could be why we have this split personality inside one champion. What is also possible is that the red and blue lights are the demon of jealousy and the demon of obsession. Those could be the two sides. Which would mean that this champion would be taken over by the collector himself. But again, for the third time, nobody has any idea. And that's why everyone is now waiting for Yon's bio to come out. Until we get the bio, we will not be able to figure out what's happening here. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot of new stuff from this video, because unless people read the lore very carefully, you won't understand most of these legends. So I was happy to help you with that. Speaking of which, the Spirit Blossom event is still going on. We will get more things later on. Which means that as more and more skins get dropped onto PBE, we will also get the skin bios of those skins too. We already know that Kindred are the taker and that Ari represents the gatekeeper. But when it comes to, for example, Cassiopeia, we still don't know the full legend. So we are still waiting for more info. But now, thank you for being here and relish in the fact that yes, we are getting Yon as a champion. But thankfully, the Spirit Blossom event seems to make him really cool which I do believe nobody expected.